Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Philippe Janot. I'm the director of the Quebec chapter and our director of Western Canada at CCBC. Bonjour à tous. Bienvenue au webinaire d'aujourd'hui. Mon nom est Philippe Janot. Je suis le directeur du chef de la section régionale du Québec et de l'Ouest du Canada pour le CCBC. Um, today's webinar uh, will we will on today's webinar we will discuss export to uh, or distribution rather in uh, in China, and we've got a great speaker uh, that will join us today. Uh, before we step into it, just wanted to remind you a few housekeeping things. Uh, we are uh, we it, we will take a we will have a short Q and A period at the end of the webinar. Please do submit your questions through the Q and A icon at the bottom of your viewing window. You might have to uh, move your mouse cursor a little bit to have the icons show up. Uh, we, time permitting, we will take the questions and, uh, and answer them as, as much as we can. Otherwise, we can follow up after the, uh, the webinar with everybody. Um, uh, just a little note, uh, we will have a period of questions at the end of the webinar. It is possible to submit your questions in French and in English, and it will be a pleasure to respond. It is possible to submit the questions in using the function Q&A at the bottom of the de visionnement. Um, before I, uh, I start this, uh, this webinar, I would like to say a big thank you to Trustix, our uh, series sponsor. This webinar is part of the China Ready series. It's the sixth uh, episode of six uh, uh, webinars that we're doing today. Um, it's been a great year learning about China, and Trustix has been a great partner. Trustix is a, a legal counsel company uh, where you can get legal advice uh, with, uh, so it's a Canadian company with a team of lawyers directly in China. You can get legal advice, you can have documents translated, contracts written up or reviewed, and they've got a great new service on, on audits. So for everybody looking, for everybody and anybody looking to do business with a partner in China and would like to get a bit of clarity on who the partner might be, please do look up Trustix service on, on the audit services. Um, with this, I'd like to, uh, uh, to invite Sophie Xu to join me on, on the screen. Sophie is with our, our session sponsor today, Bright Mega. Bright Mega is a great member of CCBC, a good, good friend. Um, and, and Sophie, uh, I invite you to tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and Bright Mega as we kick off this uh, webinar today. Thank you, Sophie. Hey, thank you, thank you, Philip. Um, I'm just gonna quickly share my screen. So um, thank you everybody for coming and thank you CCBC for having me. Um, my name is Sophie, I'm from uh, Bray Mega. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure to participate in um, today's webinar. And uh, if some of you attended the previous ones, I was in the uh, second presentation talking about uh, China e-commerce revolution. For those who never met me, and I'll be giving you a quick picture of my company and what we can offer. Um, so Brand Mega's head office is located in um, Toronto, and we have subsidiary companies in Beijing, Hong Kong, as well as um, office in Shanghai. So our president, Bernard, he founded the company 20 years ago with his um, immigrant background, as well as his connections that he built over the years. So it was no surprise that the company was uh, initially started on importing products from China to Canada. Um, just about a decade ago, uh, we <clears throat> sort of shift gear and um, we expanded our business to not only import, but uh, to put more focus on taking uh, premium Canadian products to China. Um, to grow since, you know, grow, China has been, um, you know, growing to be one of the biggest market in the world. So uh, um, I'm sure that many of you are here today with the intention to take your business to China. So um, it is no doubt that China has the world's largest e-commerce market, followed by the um, e-commerce giant Alibaba Group with subsidiary companies like uh, Taobao, uh, Tmall, and logistic company like Tainiao, um, plus the competitor JD.com and Pinduoduo. So China's e-commerce market is made of a very complex web of competitors and companies, and uh, we are here to help you to navigate through this process. Um, since we have very limited time today, and I'm not going to uh, talk in detail about all our services, but I strongly recommend you to check our, uh, our two stores on the Tmall Global platform. So on the left-hand side, you can see is the mom and baby shop, and on the right-hand side is the uh, functional foods, uh, uh, we call it 
uh, supplement shop. So if your products sit right into these two categories and we can take your products to China in, in less than one month. So how exciting is that? Um, I won't take up too much of your time today. And here on this page, you can see these are the clients that we are currently work, working with. Um, so like I said, so if your your company is in these two categories, um, you know, we are welcome to have you to talk to us and just to explore some opportunities. And um, yeah, if you have any questions about Chinese e-commerce or if you want to get, you know, started um, or even just chat about business in general, you know, uh, you know, that's uh, welcome. Uh, so here on the last page, you can find our contact information on this slide. Uh, so my name is Sophie and I have my uh, email um, um, address posted here and uh, we have uh, our, our funder Bernard He as well as his uh, WeChat QR code if you would like to uh, scan real quick. So I think that that's it for me today and thank you everyone and uh, so I'm now going to pass the mic back to the to the host. Thank you Philip. Thank you so much, Sophie, would be for being uh, with us today, and thank you for for supporting the the China series on this this episode. I, I do invite you to to put your email address in the chat box if you want. Uh, the, those slides sometimes they go fast, so uh, just make sure that people can reach you if if they're interested. I, I have to say, Bright Mega, very interesting company to to everybody in the audience. If you're looking to hit the e-commerce uh, uh, platforms in China. Bright Mega offers one of the lowest barrier to entry that I know of to, to go into China. So, so very, uh, very interesting company to talk to. Thank you, Sophie. Um, with this, I'd like to invite Michael Fan to join me on the screen and, and open your mic, uh, Michael. Uh, Michael, you are the branch manager at the Montreal office for the Merco Express Canada Corporation um, and, and also the, uh, the task force leader for the aerospace industry at Demerco. Uh, Michael, you've graduated from Concordia University and have over 70 years of experience in international logistics. Uh, without any further ado, Michael, I, I will invite you to, uh, to take the mic and tell us more about distributions in, uh, in China. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you, Philip. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to introduce myself uh, again. My name is Michael Fan. I'm from the American Express Canada Corporation. I want to thank for Philip's invitation to have me here today. Secondly, I also want to thank for your attendance. If there's any questions after my presentation, please feel free to let us know. Today, our topic is distribution channels inside China. So what we're looking for, we want to sell our products in China. Why China? What, what kind of challenge we're gonna meet if our products arrived at customs in China? And then how we distribute our products in China more efficiently, more economically? Let's keep all these questions in mind and we can study together. Why China? We may already know China has 1.4 billion people. This is a very big market. The middle class in China also grows very fast year by year. In the past, we may already know China has very big advantage for resource intensive manufacturing, for low cost label and exports. During past 20 years development in China, it almost reached its limit. So China has to change. So they will apply for the new strategy to keep growing. So China will change from low end manufacturing to higher end manufacturing. It will also change from investment to consumption. This is a very big opportunities for foreigner investment and the products and the services. We know China is number two import market in the world after the US. In US, the market is mature. 
compared to marketing in US, the marketing in China has a big room for growth. Other than the strategy, China did have open up policy. They welcome investment from overseas. They welcome the products and the services from overseas. In order to make sure the strategy works well, smoothly, China launched CIIE, China International Import Expo, four years ago. It usually happened in November in Shanghai. I just take partially highlights by number for this year. If you can see, there's a $70 billion worth of tentative deals reached for one-year purchases of goods and services. There's a 422 new products, technologies, and services exhibited. This is just partially information. If you're interested more, you can go to the website to have more information. By the way, I just want to mention, if you're interested to register this event next year, you may contact Philip because CCPC is one of the channels to register in this event. The value of import products in 2020 in China is about $2 trillion. That's the amount. Let's take a look. The list of products we imported in 2020. Electrical machinery, equipment, mineral fuels, machinery, mechanical appliance, horns, optical photographic, vehicles, plastic, articles, copper and articles, organic chemicals, oil seeds, etc. If your products belong to all this category, maybe you can study further to understand more. If your product is not in this category, maybe your product is very unique. Maybe it has more room to develop in China. So value Canada export to China in 2020 is about $25 billion. It's occupied 1.25% of total value imported in China. Let's say what industry over billion dollars import to China. Farm, fishing, energy products, medical or basic industrial chemical plastic, and forestry products, building and packaging material. The last one's consumer goods. China ranks, Canada ranks number 17 for import to China by country. Let's take a look what, which countries in front of us? Japan, South Korea, United States, Australia, Germany, Brazil, Vietnam, Malaysia, Russia, Thailand, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Singapore, France, Chile, Italy, then Canada. So we have big room to improve. China ranks number two for Canada's exports. Obviously, USA is our number one partners. But China, they have 
big room, big opportunity to improve in the future. Now, let's study a little bit about customs in China. Customs operations in China. Remote clearance is an option. What that means? For example, if you have a customer located in Beijing and the broker also located in Beijing, but the cargo is moved to Shanghai airport. So the broker at Beijing can clear the custom through customs platform online directly. What's the difference? The difference is the revenue in this case will belong to Beijing instead of Shanghai. Customs clearance in airlines warehouse for direct air review and in forwarders warehouse for master review and house review. Sometimes for some products, we may need to move the product by direct air review. That means in the air review, it shows real shaper, real consignee. After cargo arrives destination airlines warehouse, the broker can clear the custom in their warehouse and pick up cargo afterwards. Custom declaration during transit. This for some urgent cargo, we want to move fast. That means after flight departure from origin, the broker at destination can do the entry for the cargo. They can also pay the duty in advance. Once the cargo arrives at destination warehouse, if there's no inspection, cargo will be released right away. However, we have to consider the real situation. If there's cargo missing, it's gonna take longer time to process. It's a little bit different from the practice in Canada. In Canada, when we have imported cargo partially arrived, we can clear partially for the cargo. And then we're gonna clear the rest once it arrived. But in China, the cargo has to be complete. Otherwise, we cannot clear. If there's any missing cargo happen, the airline, the forwarder has to search at origin and destination. It may take three to five days. After you conclude the cargo is really missing, you have to report to custom and then you'll clear the cargo arrival. So HS code and the cargo value. In 2018, China increased total number of digit in its commodity code to 13. Let's take a look. The first six digit is standard worldwide. The next four digit is country specific. The last three digit is China specific, CIQ. That means code of inspection and quarantine. In reality, 10 digit HS code is enough for Chinese customs. If Chinese custom has more inquiry, they're gonna give you the option to choose. In that case, you may see the last three digit. For HS code, it's updated every five years by WCO. World Customs Organization. So remember, starting January 1st next year, the HS code will be updated. So please verify the HS code for your products if it's still applicable. Cargo value, backups needed. 
in Chinese customs, they have record for all the past imported commodity. If you declare your cargo with discrepancy value with record in Chinese customs, there may be customs inspection applied. I want to share the case here. A couple of years ago, we import used helicopters from Europe to China because based on different conditions, the used helicopter price is totally different. The customer de de declared very low value of this specific used helicopters. It's caught attention by Chinese custom at destination. In this case, the consignee in China, they have to fly to the customs, they have to attend on site to explain the situation and show all the proof to the customs officer. And in, in the end, it was solved, but it really takes time. 3C, certificate, China compulsory certificate certification. You may already know this certification. I just want to emphasize again, if you're a newcomer, please pay attention on this. The commitment to confirm to WTO's agreement on technical barrier to trade. A compulsory product certification system covering 158 types of products. It is for both domestic and imported products. The 3C services standard is about three months, but the time required can be much longer depending on the nature of the products and the required testing. Canadian company can apply on its own, a user agent or consultant to manage the application. Once the application is approved, a 3C certificate is valid for five years. Applicants can apply for the renewal of the 3 3C certificate 90 days before the expiration. Couple of years ago, there's one cleaning company moved a couple of containers to China. When the container arrived at China, it was called the commodity need 3C certification. So they have no choice they have to turn around the cargo back to origin. It takes a very long time and has a very big loss. Country of origin, USA. We export products to China, maybe from USA, maybe from Canada. But the country of origin made from USA, even though you export from Canada. So there's a temporary regulation for all USA products. There's there gonna be additional duty applied. Enterprises in China is able to apply for the exemption. Once the application is approved, duty will be removed. AEO, Authorized Economic Operator. This is similar as PIP in Canada and the CityPath in USA. Protection in partnership, custom trade partner against terrorism. What advantage do we have for AEO? Priority in handling the bonded transshipment. Priority in releasing the physical cargo. Priority in examination. Priority in clearance. Why they have those advantage? Because for AEO certification, you will have dedicated service window in customs. You have VAT settlement after cargo released by customs. You have priority in customs examination. 
And also you will have lower ratio of customs examination. Applying custom brokerage during non-working hours. There's a little case study of import operations. In Shanghai, customs office hours from 8.30 in the morning to 11.30 and 1.30 in the afternoon to 4 o'clock. So when cargo arrived in Shanghai with AEO at 7 o'clock, they could get staffing within two hours to 9 o'clock. And then they will transfer inbound to Forbes warehouse from 9 o'clock to 10.30. And then they, they can do custom clearance. If there's no inspection, everything will go smoothly and take half an hour. And then they will do the delivery. So totally, it may save around five hours. Inspection and quarantine. After cargo arrived in China, if it need inspection and quarantine, the cargo will need to be moved to customs supervised warehouse. Sometimes the forwarder warehouse is also customs supervised. That will be more efficient. For commercial inspection, they will do the labeling checking, commodity checking, quantity checking, etc. For quarantine, for the plant, animal, food-related commodity, they would just want to prevent the spread of disease or pests. So local customs broker on-site support helps. Let's take an example of what we mentioned before. If you have customer in Beijing and you, you have a broker in Beijing, the cargo arrived in Shanghai. If there's inspection in Shanghai, the broker in Beijing will need to ask their agent in Shanghai to go to the customs to help clarify, process the inspection. During pandemic, there's something special only for pandemic. Disinfection in all related warehouse. Cargo arrived in airlines warehouse. The liquid will, do, will need to be sprayed to all phases of the received units. And then the transfer inbound to forwarders warehouse. The procedure has to be repeated again. And then if got inspection transferred to custom supervised warehouse, it's gonna repeat again. Other than this, the regular cargo may also be quarantined for random COVID test. Now, come to our topics, distribution channels inside China. I want to talk about the major bonded zone of warehouse in China. As top, you can see FTZ, free trade zone, BLP, bond logistic park, IFTZ, integrated free trade zone, EPZ, export process zone. What functions they have? Take a look at the left side. The first function, VAT refund, for domestic goods inbound. For regular free trade zone, there's no immediately tax refund. They could only have tax refund after the cargo export to the warehouse. Also, there's no tax refund. If customer order products from Chinese supplier and then sell it to Chinese customer. But for PLP, IFTZ, and the EPZ, you can get immediately tax refund. 
The second function is bonded import from overseas. That means when cargo imported from overseas to China, they could transfer inbound to all these four free trade zone or warehouse. The duty and tax will be delayed. Interport. When overseas cargo arrived in China, you can transfer inbound to the first three warehouse. And then you may do some modification, relabeling, tating. And then you can move the cargo to another country. But the EP that is not qualified. Manufacturing. For regular free trade zone and BLP, you need to apply for a special proof. Usually the application may not be proved because this is not their regular function. But for IFTZ and the EPZ, they can do manufacturing. Simple value added services, they all qualified for this function. Knitting, labeling, repacking, but make sure there's no change of HS code. Linked with seaport or airport. For this function, only IFT that qualified. What that means? That means in this IFT that zone, they have a special channel to connecting the customs in seaport and airport. When there's any transactions, it will work very efficiently. International trade, that means for foreign exchange receipt, you can only do this in first three trade zone. Domestic sale, all this for free trade zone was qualified. IFTZ BLP solution. This for export from China. You may have partners in China already. You may have your own manufacturer in China already. Let's take a look at the flow chart. The overseas customer sends order. The manufacturer removes the cargo to IFTZ and the BLP zone. You got immediately tax refund. After that, you can move internationally by courier or air or ocean services. This is about cash flow saving for the supplier. I have to that, have to that functions. It's the import to China. When cargo arrived in China, the transfer inbound to free trade zone, there's no VAT import tax applied yet. Only when you move the cargo outside FTZ and FTZ, you will pay the duty and tax. So for the goods, unsold or maintenance, you can re-export from the IFTZ and the free trade zone back to overseas. IFT that BLP, another solution, export import within China. We call it a U-turn. The order made by overseas customer, the purchase Chinese manufactured products 
and sell to Chinese customers. So Chinese manufacturer move cargo to IFTZ and the BLP. They got immediately tax refund. And then cargo can stay in the zone. When they export from zone to final customers in China, the customer will need to apply the import process. Clear the custom, pay duty and tax, and then got the commodity delivery. TSS solution, technical service station. This is really special warehouse. It's for spare parts and AOG cargo, aircraft on ground. So spare parts transfer inbound to TSS warehouse. Parts can be delivered first and then cleared customs in 14 days. So for urgency of the spare parts and aerospace parts, there's no barrier, no delay in customs. The time critical delivery, there are 724 services in Shanghai, same city delivery, 40 minutes. Deliver to enter China, for example, to Shuzhou, two hours, to Wuxi, five hours. The remaining parts return. The remaining parts after repairing at customers will be re-imported to GSS warehouse in 14 days. So there are no duty and tax occurred for the remaining parts. We want to have two case sharing to better understand all this free trade zone. For you turn case, I have a Hong Kong toy company we may have multiple suppliers in China. When they have the order from overseas, they just truck their own products to the bonded warehouse. And then you can do the modification, change the label, change the packaging. And then after custom clearance, import process, move the cargo to the final buyer in China domestically. This import to China for foreign international technology company. We may have multiple international suppliers who can transport in different modes to move the cargo finally to the bonded warehouse in China. So in the bonded warehouse, you don't need to pay the duty and tax yet. Whenever you move the cargo outside the bond warehouse, you'll pay them. So that's all for my pre presentation today. Thank you very much. I pass it to Philip. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for the presentation. Stay, stay with me. We've got actually a, a few uh, questions from the audience that I'd like to uh, to pass along. Uh, but thank you so much for the information. Uh, very, very insightful. Um, one question came from Danielle Jiang, uh, which I believe is in Montreal, uh, saying um, she, was, she was asking you about, she was saying that you were talking, uh, it was early on in the presentation, you might have addressed this a little bit, but, uh, but just to review, we we're talking about custom clearance on air cargo, but she was saying, can you expand a little bit more on ocean shipping, uh, custom clearance, uh, since there's more volume going to China for, for on ocean freight? Um, I don't, I don't think there's much of a, there's too much difference between the custom clearance of air and ocean, but maybe you can tell us a little bit uh, if there is any difference. Yeah, the difference for air shipment, usually for different airlines, we already know in advance which destination handling agent, which 
warehouse at destination. But for ocean, there's a little bit different. For containers in Canada, sometimes same situation. When containers arrived at destination, they, move, they may move to different terminals. You may not know in advance which terminals it goes. So the only thing, because it takes a longer time, usually it's not uh, urgent. That's why for today's topic, we majorly focus on the air shipment. But in the regular process, it's no different for air in the ocean. Okay. Yeah, for ocean containers, afterwards, you still ca can transfer inbound to all this bonded warehouse or bonded zone. Excellent. And I, I guess with the ocean freight, uh, since you don't know the destination, the ne destination of the vessel necessarily, it, it might go go back to the explanation you were giving about the broker not being in the same city as where the uh, the freight arrives, and then he needs to go to the uh, to to do the custom clearance and and maybe a different jurisdiction. Is that what I'm understanding? Uh, uh, this is different uh, because the terminal for ocean they may be. For one city, they have maybe different terminals. Like in Vancouver, we have different three terminals in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah sometimes if there's a, something happens, we don't know which terminal they're gonna go, which yard the container gonna go. So that's a little bit different for the uh, clearance in different cities, yeah. Excellent. We can clear no problem for the uh, clearance remotely, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I sense also maybe Danielle has a, has a specific case in mind. So I'll be happy to connect uh, Danielle with you if you don't mind, Michael. So maybe there's a, there's a more of a conversation that can be had offline. Yeah. Um, we also uh, received an, a question from uh, Bill Coleman. Uh, at, when you were talking about the CCC certification, um, and he's asking, will, will uh, the CCC certification be replaced by the single window certification? Um, do, you, do you understand the question? Do you have, a, do you have any possible answer there? Uh, so far, I didn't hear the CCC certification will be replaced yet. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, if uh, you can explain a little bit more. Um, well, and, and I'm not sure, but I. So if I if I kind of and uh, Bill, if you want to add uh, in the Q and A box, there's a clarify. But so my understanding of the CCC certification is that it's it's kind of similar to the CSA certification in, in Canada. It's for security purposes on like electronic devices and things like this. And the single window. The, the only thing I, I kind of understood so far was. A, a, port, a centralized portal that was introduced a few years ago in China to submit documentation. So I'm, I'm, I'm not completely sure that it, that it goes, uh, that it's a replacement as much as maybe a tool. Uh, but Bill, please feel free to add to your question in the Q&A box if you want to, uh, to guide us a little bit more. Um, another question from uh, Danielle Jiang, uh, uh, Michael, and I think it relates more to inbound uh, business and uh, or inbound freight coming to Canada, but she's saying another question in December on December first, twenty twenty one. There's thirty two countries, including Canada, that have announced to cancel the G GSP generalized system of preference uh, on the goods made and exported from China, which means the import duty on made in China products entering Canada will rise. She's asking, do you have a solution to this? Um, I, I guess other than working on your manufacturing costs, but uh, what's what's your sense on on that front, Michael? Uh, so far, I think uh, this, this is applied for all the companies. So as long as your competitors also have the same situation, I think we're not worried because this regulation is already applied. You cannot change it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So far, I didn't figure out there's any, you know, solutions for this yet. No, I, I understand. And I'll remind the people in the audience, feel free to, to send your, submit your questions uh, via the Q&A box. Um, actually, we've got a clarification that came in from, uh, from Bill uh, saying all manufacturers who want to export to China in 2022 must register, on, must register on the single window system. They are given a registration number which must be placed on the products. So maybe, maybe it's an additional level of labeling yeah, that, that, that's possible. And uh, for this part, probably I could verify further with our colleagues uh, in China. Yes. So maybe again, maybe I can connect uh, Bill with you and uh, maybe it's a bigger conversation that we can take offline. 
Um, I, I've got a couple of questions for you, Michael, on uh, from your presentation. Um, uh, when you were talking about uh, custom clearance, you, you were talking about the uh, issues maybe with missing cargo. Uh, can you tell us what is what would be considered missing cargo? Um, so let's say I, I send a container, there's 40,000 of something in the container and there's a few units missing because of the count is off. Is that missing cargo or, or does it need to be a, a very large volume of something missing? So, so what, what, would, what are the cases there? Yeah, basically uh, it's uh, for example, right? If we import 100 cartons in the container, but when it's arrived at destination, you only find out, oh, there are only 60 cartons. That's what we considered cargo missing. Okay. But most of trans for containers, because it's different from the air shipment. Containers, it's very difficult to verify case by case. But for air shipment, once the cargo arrived at the airport, we can count how many cartons. Yeah. So yeah, sure. if there's a big discrepancy or small discrepancy, they have to be unpending. Okay, so so basically, the recommendation is be 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 correct as much as possible on yeah. on the declaration. Um, another question I had, Michael, uh, you were talking about HS codes and, and the, the country specific labeling for China, and then you referred to the HS codes when you're you're in, in some of the FTZ um, and so, some some that for the simple value added, it shouldn't change on the HS codes. So I, I'm kind of curious. In Canada, I'm very well aware that we can get the full list of HS codes uh, specific, more specific to Canada, I guess, through the CBSA, the Canadian Border Safety Agency. What's the reference for China? Where, where would people go to get the list of, uh, of HS code and, and spe specifically the country specific digits? Oh, you, you mean the three digits? What yeah. I, when I talk to our colleagues uh, in China, I also ask uh, you know, the same questions. Uh, basically, like I explained in the PowerPoint, uh, 10 digit is enough. Because the only situations if customs officers think, oh, they need, need more details, they will give you option to choose. And then there's a description and also HS code. So at that moment, you will find out. Okay, but is there, is there a document we can, we can read uh, up front to, to see what is the full list of these digits? Yeah, I could find uh, afterwards, maybe I'll send it to you. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, just going through here, uh, there's a, another question that came in. Just give me a second. So Roman was asking, can the products that were purchased by mainland customers arrive from Canada prepackaged and pre-labeled with local, for example, EMS waybill uh, for individual end user orders? Uh, and then he, he continues, the products will arrive via freight forwarder to a Hong Kong or Shanghai warehouse. Uh, I actually not fully understand the question yet. Is it like a one single product purchaser from Canada and the e-commerce? Uh, well, so products arriving... Uh, I, I, I'm not sure either, uh, Michael. Uh, so my, my understanding of the question is, can the products arrive in China? Pre so shipping from Canada, going to China, arrive pre-packaged and pre-labeled uh, with the local way bill. Um, oh, and they, they, they would be arriving in bulk in Hong Kong. Uh, hmm. I'm, uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, if you like uh, uh, export from Canada to Hong Kong, because uh, Hong Kong is a free port. Yeah. You can change the label, you can change the packaging over there. And then you will do either by courier to move to China or either by like uh, uh, inbound truck uh, to China. Okay. No problem, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess I, I get a sense a little bit more. So the arriving bulk in Hong Kong, uh, repackaged in, in Hong Kong or, or, or I guess China and, and mailed out as individual products in, into China. And you, I guess you were talking about this in one of the uh, styles of FTZ where we can do kitting uh, and it's possible to receive a bulk package in a, an abandoned warehouse 
do some simple added value like kitting and, and redistribute in, in, in Asia, correct? Uh, in the past, uh, we do have a customer in USA and uh, they did at the very beginning to move the e-commerce small package from USA to China. Mm -hmm. We have the order, but we help them to move the big buck shipment from USA to Hong Kong. And then through Hong Kong, we use courier services directly. That we can connect the courier company, uh, like IT platform to our IT platform. So you can track in trees on our website. So that will save, I think, 30% of their cost for this company in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, my, I guess Roman could also look at cross-border businesses. I, I, if this applies to e-commerce, there, there's a bunch of solutions that, that could be advantages for him. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of FTZ, uh, Michael, and, and the, the types that exist, I, I'm kind of curious. Um, so, so, for, for, so for, for a company in Canada to take advantage of, of these incentives of, of FTZ, um, is there a third party logistics company or, or third party company that, can we, that Canadian companies can contact to do business with them in their warehouse that would be a bonded warehouse and, and kind of a, some sort of 3PL? Or does the Canadian company need to have their own um, operation inside the declared inside the FTC to take advantage of it? Oh, both ways are okay. You can either have your own or you use third party logistic, you know, in the free trade zone. This okay. all depends on what you need. And before you go, if you think you need to find some local forwarders, third party logistics service provider, yeah, they're available. They can like give me more introduction for different zone because the di why there's a different zone based on the different administration level and the geographic uh, different location there's a different zone that doesn't mean in one city they have all zones excellent and i i know your your most of your business is, is managing freight and and customs the clearance but if a company if a canadian company contacts you or, or your company to are you able to connect them with uh, with service providers or 3PLs that would uh, be able to offer the service you're talking about? Yes, uh, for our company, we do have our own bonded warehouse uh, in China. Oh, especially for the big city Shanghai, Shenzhen, Beijing. Yeah, we do you know business for existing customers over there already. And uh, in the past, usually company are interested to invest in China or looking for. Uh, 3PL, you know, they can contact us and we can introduce you locally. And we, you can take a visit actually to the warehouse to understand better how to process locally. Well, I, I look forward to the to the day where we'll be able to visit uh, because I'm, I'm I'm not sure when this will happen given the, given the current situations. Obviously, um, Michael, I, I want to say thank you. We're we're kind of coming up to our time to the end of our session here, and I, I want to say thank you for joining us uh, today. Um, I think there's one or two questions that might have uh, remained. I'll, I'll be sure to check it out and uh, offer some answers uh, via email after consulting you. Um, but thank you so much for for the information today for the discussion. Um, it was a pleasure pleasure to host this with you today and it, it was a pleasure to uh, to uh, to be part of the China Ready at CCB the China Ready series at CCBC to everybody in the audience thank you so much for joining us today merci à tous d'être venus nous rejoindre aujourd'hui pour la session sur la distribution en Chine um want to wish a very happy holiday we're kind of toward, towards the end of the year happy holiday to everyone and we'll uh, we'll see everybody very soon for for more information from our from our great partners at CCBC thank you michael have a great day thank you philip Take care. And thank you so much for both our, our sponsors, our, our session, our series sponsors, Trustix, uh, and our session sponsor today at Bright Mega. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.